I've visited a number of these treatment facilities. Is there is there a digester currently at your treatment plant? We have looked at certain types of food waste, but honestly, I'm not sure how much they've delved into that. And okay. the chemistry and the biology and science is beyond me, Lance. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I think I've seen a, certain municipalities do this very well, where you know they, they leverage the capability of digester to, you know, to, to get value out of the biosolids, um, and then they can bring in and co-digest other organic wastes alongside it um, that adds to the to the value of the gas they're creating because those are higher in biomethane. Um, the challenge is always with these these facilities, where do you take those biosolids after you even after you've digested them? And and I think you know part of part of our strategy is to <clears throat> is to, is to partner with these facilities looking at that issue maybe separate from the actual, you know, initial what are we doing with the waste, but what do we do with that that, that digested waste, you know, now it's a, it's potentially a very valuable product, um, but you know, with biosolids, there are issues with what's in that those biosolids, and a lot of that land application goes on here, and ultimately, I think the EPA is probably going to start to impose some significant restrictions around the ability to land apply that stuff due to certain things like PFAS. Um, you know, so our approach is going to be say, well, you know, let us help you, you know, sort of you know, capture as much energy as you can from these wastes uh, and then help help them figure out a way to, to alternatively dispose of those biosolids. And our, our proposal to most of these facilities is paralysis and creating a, you know, a, a biochar product that does destroy the PFAS and then is, is a valuable uh, product for, for land application. Yeah, and Lance, I think you just answered my confusion there too. Uh, we do produce the biochar, so I, it sounds like our facility does have the digestion capacity. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah. That sort of highlights the the challenge, though. Of we have all of these different types of of organics and and opportunities, I guess, to look at. But on the legal side, they don't all play nice together you know, in the terms of what you can do with it because of the, the type of waste in there. You know, we're going to have different requirements as to how it's treated or where we can spread it and communities or size and and I think that's again a challenge if we want to come together and be able to collaborate and say okay now we can support one whether it be cost or, or making sure we have the supply well we do have to make sure that we're, we're all playing nice you know in terms of the end result and not limiting ourselves in some way there too and I think the sheer scope is a problem too I mean we, you've talked on this too one of my old roommates from college was part of a team that, that brought the anaerobic, anaerobic digester onto Michigan State's campus. And they, I mean, it's the world's largest food service system, right? You know, I mean, you have tons of food coming through there. We have five or six farms right on campus. I'm, I'm an alum, so that's where the wheat comes in. Um, and he says, I still get cursed out by the president for the work it continues to be and, and the cost. And even though it, it does obviously a lot of good, we have a hard time getting everything, you know, just in terms of what it is, because he's telling me this, and I was like, okay, if Drake partnered, you know, and I'm thinking with the city, you know, and I'm doing this, and he was just like, odds of being able to do this at a level like that, just with that type of waste, he said, would be slim to none. He said, you just couldn't do it. Um, so that's part of the challenge, too. Yeah. 